So, you clicked on this video for a Rust material. Well, it's usually on sale on Steam for about 25% off. Hey guys, welcome back to Tuts by Kai, I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender once again, taking a look at this Rust-ish material, kind of metal, copper, actually it's like copper too as well, wow, I didn't even realize that until right now. Well anyway, this Rust, copper, whatever I'm gonna call it, it's probably gonna say both, uh, material today in Blender uh, 2.8 EV. So I made this bad boy off camera, I just modeled it really quick like... It started off like a, a Mega Man blaster, I guess. I don't know. And then it like turned into a vase, but it still has a hole at the bottom. I don't know what the freak it is. But hey, the material was the focus anyway. I just got carried away modeling something that I didn't need to model. Anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and drag our panel into two by dragging up, by putting our cursor on the top left-hand side and dragging over from the left, changing this right here to the shader editor. And now you can see this is the material, uh, practically all that it is, is it's very simple. I love simple, making simple materials on the channel. Anyway, this is the bulk of the material, so uh, a couple of things that I want to break down first. Let's go ahead and disconnect this top piece that's into the base color. And you can see the difference here, that is pretty much all of the color and variation color. So let's just go ahead and kind of move that stuff away for now, and let's focus on this down here. So of course we have the default principle BSDF shader, um, I'm going to disconnect this as well. So we have the default principle BSDF shader, which it looks just like this, very smooth, very uh, 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 brass-like, uh, I don't know, it, 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 whatever this is, it looks very nice and fancy, um, but we're going to go ahead and rough this up a little bit by, by, by plugging in a noise texture, so I'm going to grab the color of the noise texture and place that into, I believe, what was it, the, the roughness, I think it was? the into the into the yes the roughness <laughs> I forgot uh, all right we're gonna put this into the roughness and then what you're gonna see is you're gonna do something like this so I, I like this quite a bit and it was very subtle very natural very realistic but I really want to take it a step further so what I did was I plugged in oh by the way I'm sorry this noise shader this noise texture is shift a on your keyboard and then search and just search for a noise and then you can grab that noise texture right there now the values I input was 2 for the scale 16 for the detail 0.642 let's just make that up even 0.65 0.65 for the roughness and nothing for the distortion and then I, I didn't think that was good enough so I added a musgrave texture which is once again a shift a search must grave texture right there and then I the values I had for this was 1.3 16 0 and 2 and I just plug that into the roughness now I believe I there we go I did I have this in the scale I don't think that I did I might have doesn't make too much of a difference. You see the difference here. So it's it's all of the personal preference, but I don't like this very much right now. So I'm gonna put that put the color back into the vector, uh, and that's what I had. That is what I had. All right. So we have the noise and the musgrave now going into the roughness, and pretty much what this does is it it's just two different texture materials. So you can see the musgrave by itself does this. It kind of has like a like a splotchy kind of effect like this, and then of course we know that the the noise has a texture like this. So I kind of combined them to create something that looked like this, which I thought was very very natural, very cool looking. So now what we're doing is we're taking the roughness uh, off and like messing the roughness up in some areas and, and having it look nice. So I didn't think this was good enough though because it looked kind of bland and kind of too much of the same everywhere and I really didn't like it that much. So I was like, okay, what if I add some color variation? So that's where these two nodes come in. So the other thing that I did was I hit, well, as I selected our noise texture and hit shift D to duplicate our noise texture and I just left click to, con to, to move that and then, yeah, and that's what I did. And I put it up here. So after that, B to box selected by the way um, and then G to move nodes. Um, so what I did was I just duplicated the noise texture from down here and moved it up here and changed the values around a little bit. So I changed the scale from 2 to 5 and then I had the detail also on six, uh, 16 sorry, and then the roughness on, let's just make that an even 8 on point 0.8 and then the distortion on 0 and then I just hit shift A and search for a color ramp shader uh, which is this bad, bad boy right here and it comes with the black and white and only two colors but what I did was I went ahead and I changed this to ease because I believe the default is linear I changed it to ease which doesn't do too much but it was subtle enough for me to want to do it um, what I did was I hit this little plus button and I added in another point and then I clicked down here just to change the color so that's what I did um, so I have three different colors this was the white and this was the black but I made this one like brown like that that uh, and then I made this one like uh, yellowish orange kind of sherbet looking color and then I made this like a uh, desaturated bloodstone red you know thing like that um, which is very very nice as well so 
we have these three, these three colors that are being fed into the noise texture, which will do something that looks approximately like this when you plug it into the base color of the principal BSDF. Now, what you're seeing is you're seeing all of the color um, go through, but if we had no noise texture, it would look like this. It would just choose an in-between value between any one of these colors. Uh, and it would just be solid, whatever that is. But I didn't want it to be solid. I wanted it to be splotchy and different colored, uh, like maybe some parts are more worn, some parts are whatever. So I plugged the color into the color ramp, the color of the noise texture into the color ramp, and now it's taking all these different values. So all the darker colors will be this darker brown, all of the mid-range colors will be this orange, and the lightest colors will be the light uh, the, the, this light orangey color, which is very nice. So now it looks like there's multiple different colors in there. You can see we have some nice variation. It looks really good from far away as well, and it does a little bit more shining on the inside, actually. So the cool thing about this is now that once we plug this in with the Musgrave and noise texture that goes into the roughness, you can now see we have quite a nice looking material for rust or copper or just something old in general like an antique or a like a ruin or something I don't know what you're doing but this looks pretty cool and it definitely looks better with the color variation of course it's very unsaturated uh, without it so that is pretty much the material and I, I want to just go ahead and put it on put this on a, a sphere as well and just bump that up real quick just because I want to see it on a different object to be honest with you so let's go ahead and just do this real quick and then just put this material on there and yeah, that looks awesome. Very, very, very cool. So you can see how even on multiple different objects, this material still works very well uh, for multiple different things. This could literally be like a set that you find in like Egypt, like a like a like a vase and some kind of ball and a cube or something. I don't know, but this definitely looks like I just walked into some kind of Egyptian ruin. This looks very, very amazing. I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed today's tutorial. I will see you in the next one, uh, but until then, bye-bye. <laughs>